gonna get started. So today, um, my name is Rakisha. I'm one of the admins for Black Girls Craft. I also own Buy Kicks with Love and the Godfrey Firm. Hey Jen, hey Jose, which I know that ain't your name, Nisha. <laughs> Um, so we have enough people that have joined and again, there will be a replay. I don't want to keep you all. I know it's Sunday and I don't know about y'all, but Sunday is when I like mentally prepare for the week. So today we're going to cover uh, barefoot sandals, which for those who don't know, they go by a lot of different names like beach sandals. Um, people usually wear them like on vacation or, you know, if you go to pool parties or whatever, and that's like a little accessory that not a lot of people have. I know waist beads are really catching on this year, but I don't think barefoot sandals have really made that transition yet to like be really trendy. And so um, I think there's still some room for that market to grow. And it could just be that people don't know enough about them. Or it could be that people don't know how to make them. So when I started making them two years ago, nobody had good tutorials on YouTube. Like, and I was, I'm in like YouTube University grad school. Like I, I could probably get my PhD from YouTube University because I've learned like everything from there. I learned how to, you know, double check my oil level in my truck. Like I've learned everything from YouTube. So I'm one of those people who's like, if I don't know how to make something, I'm like, let me check YouTube. So, but at the time when I started making them, there was no tutorials. And the ones that were, they were like wedding sandals or like beach sandals or whatever. But there was not anything that told me how to make them for other people. Like everyone was saying, this is how you make them yourself. You know, you grab the measuring tape, you measure your foot, and then you grab the little jewelry wire, you cut it, and then you make it. But I wanted to make them to sell. And nobody was able to tell me, you know, how do you make them to sell? And how do you size them so that, you know, when your customers get them, that they that they fit? Because, of course, they're not going to... Some places, like I've, I ordered some off Ally Express when I first started just to see how they size them. Um, so some of theirs are like one size fits all, but if you're doing like a statement sandal like this, I don't know if y'all can see. See, if it's this, I'm a size seven and a half in women's. Um, hi Bertha! Um, I'm a size seven and a half in women's, I wear a five and a half in kids. My sandal would not fit someone who wears like a size nine or a ten. No offense to y'all, but just, you know, using that to make my point so what I needed was to teach myself how to be able to make something like this so that someone with the skinny foot with the high arch with the flat foot that they will be able to still wear them and so today that's what I'm gonna teach y'all the things that I found out myself from you know trial and error so that if you're interested in making them for yourself or if you're interested in selling them then you'll be able to make them so the first thing we'll cover is the materials so let me hold on one second I just remember I put away one of the main materials which is this stuff so the there are several different types of barefoot sandals and the materials that you need will depend on what kind you want to make and so the main two that I'm going to talk about today are the kind made with seed beads and what's called statement sandals which are made with um, pieces that are usually used to make statement jewelry like necklaces and earrings so just to give you an example and I have like my little setup here um, this is one made with seed beads and seed beads are just little glass beads they come like this they come in like multiple strands you can get them in several different colors like literally all colors I was just in Michaels yesterday and they had a sale and then they had that 25% off coupon so I got a lot of seed beads because you can use them for waist beads and everything too so they're they're really versatile and they come in different sizes so that's like a big plus so you can get them in like really tiny ones which I have here in my little bead spinner these are really tiny these are size 12 0 and I wish that I knew like what the size is meant. I just know that the bigger the number, usually the smaller the hole. Um, and so these are like size 12-0. And I got these from Hobby Lobby. I hope y'all can see that. 
This is my first time like doing a demonstration on my phone, so if y'all can't see something, just let me know and then I'll try to make some adjustments. So these are size 12-0 and I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're marked $3.99 but I got them 50% off. And I use these, I, I got this little bead spinner, some of y'all saw it. I got this little bead spinner um, this past week and so I just filled it with those and um, that's what I use to make some of my waist beads. I started my my company by Keeks with Love is releasing our jewelry line on May 20th and so we'll have waist beads and barefoot sandals and things like that and that little contraption is really useful so again back to what I was saying so if you're depending on what kind of barefoot sandals you want to make your materials will change so for example if you want to make these seed bead sandals you would need seed beads and this um, stretch stuff and it's called stretch magic and the big thing that you want to pay attention to when you're using stretchy string is the size so this is 0.5 millimeters in diameter this is the largest that I use for most of my barefoot sandals if it's a 12 o barefoot if I'm using 12 o 12 0 CB size I only use 0.5 diameter um, <laughs> well, I must, first of all, my sisters know I'm live and they're like texting me because they're rude. Um, but yeah, so Danielle, I'll explain the spinner in a second. Um, so right now I'm going over the materials if you just joined us. And um, so right now I'm telling you if you want to make the barefoot sandals that are just like the plain ones with seed beads. And I don't, I'm trying to like make it so y'all can see. And this is just seed beads and then I add a little what I call a focal bead in the middle and the way that this one would work is you would just put it on your toes and well you wrap it around your ankle and put it on your toe like this <laughs> I did not plan to show y'all my feet today um, but so this is just like probably the easiest one and the most cost-effective one because you don't need that many materials to get started honestly you just need the seed beads the focal beads and this string um, what I use to uh, make sure that my beads don't come off are these little bead stoppers they look like this and they I got them from Amazon but you can also find them on <laughs> you can also find them in uh, most craft stores and so you just kind of put the string through this little hole and that make that helps it so that your beads don't come off so to make the seed bead sandals all you need is string seed beads and you know a bead stopper um, when I first started I was really real resourceful and I just use old keychains because then you can just open them up put the string in there and then you're done and it works just as fine I just feel fancy when I use these but like you don't have to go out and buy those if you want to keep your um, sandals cost effective. Now, the more, it gets a little bit more expensive to get started, um, but you can kind of keep the cost around the same if you want to do statement sandals. And that's because you have to buy, obviously, more materials. So, for example, for these, they have, like, these are, um, I got these beads actually from a store that went out of business. It was called Hancock Fabrics. And they were going out of business like maybe a year and a half ago. And I was like panicking because I love the store. And I bought all this jewelry stuff that they had on sale. And then I actually went into Hobby Lobby the other day. And I saw that Hobby Lobby has these now too. And so they come like this. From Hobby Lobby obviously I just bought stuff just so I can show y'all um, they come like this from Hobby Lobby and this is $7.99 per strand and to make the seed beads I usually buy four per set like you can choose to make one sandal which you know it's your it's all about your preference personally I think it looks really weird to just wear one um, you can choose to buy one sandal or make one sandal or if you want to make a pair, the minimum that you need, and I have a, I, like I said, I wear a seven and a half. So for me, I use 
four of these to make one pair and it's usually two strands per sandal so to make the signature sandals you'll need a bead that has like this two um, I don't know what it's called like I taught myself and I didn't really focus on the jargon as much so if y'all know what it's called please let me know but you need a bead that has like two ends because then you're gonna put a jump ring on this end and a jump ring on the other end I did learn jump rings and that's how you're gonna put them together so you take for one pair you would need two of these which I already made mine so I don't have two <laughs> I don't have two left, but you'll need two of these. And then in addition to that, you're going to need jump rings, which look like this. Now I recommend buying a variety pack because what I do is I use a smaller jump ring to connect the extra pieces. And then I use a larger jump ring in the middle of the sandal like you can see like hopefully you can see there is like a larger piece in the middle and that's what I use to connect it so that it stays flat so I recommend getting like a variety pack of jump rings like this like it has big ones small ones and I recommend getting at least a gold plated one because then you'll make sure that they don't turn the first time that you wear them you'll also need uh, I recommend lobster clasp, but you'll just need any kind of clasp. And I like these the best. There's like a bad glare. But they look like this. And I got them from Hobby Lobby. They're in the jewelry shop, $2.99. You could also get, um, what I use when I'm selling them actually is, I'll add an extender chain just because some people's feet swell or whatever. And so what I'll do is I'll use a lobster clasp. And then um, I'll add an extender chain at the end. And you can get them in sets like this. I went to Joann's yesterday just for y'all and got this set. So I know that they still have them. Um, and they come in gold. And then Joann's didn't have silver. But um, they come in gold and silver. And so the last thing that you'll need. Well, there are actually two more things. So And then for the um, toe part, you'll need a crimp bead. And they look like this. And it's just a little circle, and that's what you'll use to um, close out the wire when you're setting up the toe piece. And then the last thing that you need is, I think it's called a cord. I didn't, I didn't see any of these yesterday, but I think it's called, yeah, it's called a cord crimp. And it's this little thing, and I got the 9 millimeter size. And it looks like these things. I don't know if y'all can see it. But it's like these little beads. And they have like a crimp part on the top. And then a circle part on the bottom. And that's what you'll use. And I'll show you. So for the statement bead, what I do is I add the seed beads on the bottom. And then the crimp bead, can y'all see that? The crimp bead is what connects the, the toe piece to the rest of the sandal. And I used to use a chain here, but I wear, I started out making these because I wear them. And I was in Florida at the time and like getting sand in between your toes is one thing. But when you have sand and a chain, it's just like a special kind of uncomfortable. So... I just started using size 12 zero seed beads on the toe part and then um, the crimp, the cord crimp um, is what connects it and then it also makes it stretchy too so for people that might have wider feet or like weird kind of feet um, it, it really I got really good feedback for those people so the types that you can um, make for the statement beads is really endless like I like to shop the sale section and you can get like these kinds of beads like anything that has two ends on it you can use it to make statement beads hold on <laughs> and Afayumi says they're beautiful thank you 
Um, hi, Shannon. Hi, Gina. All right. So um, here's how I make the seed bead sandals. So the first thing that you want to do is figure out what size your person is. Honestly, I don't know how to make them one size fits all. And I think people are more confident in the fact that, you know, they choose their size, kind of like you choose your shoe size. Um, so what I do is I measure the string. What dang measuring tape fell? Oh, no, it didn't. All right, so I measure, I, I have a chart of shoe sizes, and you can find that easily on Google. Uh, you can just Google U.S. shoe sizes in inches, and there's, like, all these different charts that'll come up. And so what I do is I will choose whatever size that I want to make. In my case, I'll make a seven and a half. And so a seven and a half is 9.25 inches. And I always add an inch just because it makes it easier when I want to tie it. And with the seed bead sandals, it's really time consuming. And I don't want to keep y'all too long. So I'll just like walk you through what the techniques are. And then if y'all have any questions, you can tell me and then we can go from there. Because even with this, and this thing gets really loud too. So even with this, it can take about, you know, 15 minutes to make one sandal. And I don't want to like put y'all through watching me clamoring around. So all you do to make the CB ones is you can either get the seed beads that are in the package, like what I showed y'all before, or you can buy them that are already on the string, like this. Now these are my favorite, just because they're already on the string. And they actually come from Joann's like this, and there's like several loops of them. And what I do is I break this string, and it's like fishing wire or whatever you wanna call it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll break them apart, and then this is really easy because what I can do is instead of doing it like, you know, if I buy it in a packet and then if I didn't have that little spinning contraption, then I would just take the string and try to string it all, you know, one by one by one versus if I have it like these beads, I can cut it and I'll just show y'all what I mean. Hold on. Because I don't want to waste my string. So I'm going to actually measure this. So I'm going to make it a size 7.5. So I'm just going to make it 10 and a quarter inches. And then I'll cut it. Oh, I almost forgot. Y'all will need these little handy dandy tools. <laughs> For this, you don't, I mean, I don't really, I, I like this. It's cute. But this is just scissors to me. Um, it's good for cutting cords and cutting the wires. This is like the, I call it a flattener, but I'm pretty sure it has a better name than that. There's another round one, but I let my daughter help me make jewelry yesterday and I don't know where she put it. And if y'all don't have kids, you know, if you ask a three year old where they put something, they have no idea. So I haven't found it, but it's another one that came in a set and it looks like this, except it's round and I use that to like curve the jump rings and to help me close them. So I've just been trying to make it do what it do with these two. So what I would do is I would cut my cord and I dropped the cord already. Oh, here it is. All right. So I would cut my cord like this. I would take my bead stopper, open it up, put the string on it. So there you go. It's pretty strong too. And so if I'm using these, which I honestly prefer, the only thing I don't like about these is they don't come in like really, really pretty sets. Like, you know how this has like the blends in it. It come, This came like this with all these pretty colors. So it looks like, you know, really iridescent and, you know, different. But these, they usually just come like solid colors or whatever. Um, but I still do prefer these because they're much faster. So then I just cut the end off. Let me see if I can like move this so y'all can see without it like looking all weird. Okay. Because I know y'all don't want to see me. So give me one second. Let me see if I can adjust this so that y'all can actually see what I'm doing. Hopefully this will 
work better than just watching me talk. I mean, I know I'm cute, but y'all ain't came to see me, and that's okay. That is okay that you did not come to see me. Alright. I have my phone on a stand, so that's why you see me a little bit closer to the camera. Alright, so, let's see. I'm trying to get it so that it lays down. Still having a little technical difficulties. Alright, okay. So I hope you can see some of it. I guess this is the best... It's the best you're going to get today. Alright, so what I do is I will cut the strong beads like here. And these are a little bit faster. Clearly, I just dropped them. These are a little bit faster because I can take off like several beads at a time and just snake it through all the beads at one time like this so instead of like stringing one or two beads I can string as many beads as my fingers can hold and it takes a lot of focus so I don't have a lot of focus right now because I'm trying to like get through all the content and make sure that I cover everything but this is just one of the techniques so if you don't want to um, get a, a bead spinner then that's one of the techniques that you can use um, another option which has become my favorite option but I'm not quite an expert on it yet I've only used it like four times already um, is a bead spinner and it's this little thing when I posted in a group a few days ago people said that they had seen it and they wanted to try it but they didn't really know um, what it was or whether it worked and it does work so if you want to start you want to use your make your seed bead sandals um, and even just to make the toe part for the statement sandals you can use this and this is called a bead spinner junior and what you would need is the actual contraption and bead spinner needles it does come with the needle but it was so flimsy that I'm glad I purchased the um, the actual extra needles and it's by the Dars brand and I got these from Amazon but I saw them in Michaels yesterday I think I saw them in Joanne's too but I'm not 100% sure and so all you do with this is you would take the needle and it's a curved needle and then it has like it opens and I think that's why it's called like a big eye needle or something and so you can still use the bead stopper you would still keep the bead stopper on and then you would uh, thread the needle and then I pull it down and then you just put the needle in, and it takes a little practice, but when you put the needle inside here and then you spin it at a certain angle, then it catches the um, beads for you. So then like usually my seed bead sandals, like I said, they usually take me like 15 minutes. But if I have this, not 15 minutes, before that they used, they would take me like 30 to 40 minutes because I prefer the smaller beads versus the larger one for my sandals. Um, it would take me like 30 to 40 minutes but with this if I'm really focused it takes me 10 or 15 minutes and I'm not confident enough to do this in front of y'all I feel like the one time I tried to try it y'all would uh, see me mess up and the needle would break or something so <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm not gonna try it but trust me it works I wouldn't tell y'all this and this is not like an affiliate program or nothing I didn't like I'm not getting like no commission or nothing on it um, for telling y'all about it. So that's it for the sea bead sandals. And then Audrey did a class last year, I think it was October, where she told us, you know, about making bracelets. Pretty much the same technique. Um, once you string it, you can make different types. So you can choose to make like the wide eye one, like I made, which um crap where did I put that thing um you can make the wide eye ones which what I did was I just strung it like this and then I got to a certain point where I added the focal bead in the middle and then I kept going until the end 
and then you just tie it. And the way that I tie mine is a double tie. So I tie it once this way or whatever way you want to start. And then I tie a knot and then I go back twice the opposite way. And then I'll usually burn them off or I'll put a dab of E6000 glue on the end just to make sure that, it, just to add a little bit more security. But I have some sandals. The purple one that I showed y'all, I've had that for like three years and it hasn't broken yet. So pretty secure. All right, so for the statement sandals, um, and before I go to statement sandals, does anybody have any questions or comments, concerns, or anything? I'll scroll because I was like all up in my thing. Oh, <laughs> hi, Q, and hey, Shay. All right, so no questions yet. All right, so, um, and don't be shy. I know some, some people, like, I don't know why y'all think the admin are like, I don't know how y'all view us, but y'all have to be shy to talk to us. Um, so for the statement sandals, there are endless possibilities. Oh, wait, before I go there. So you can even make, um, you don't have to make them for adults. My daughter uh, wants to be just like me. And so when she saw me wearing mine and making mine, she wanted a pair for herself. And so I made her a pair. So you can even make them... For babies which my collection will feature for babies too and it's mostly because my daughter makes me make them for her so I'm like I might as well sell the extra ones and this is what the baby ones look like and to make this one you would just um, add the seed beads curve it here uh, this is about like an inch and a half on the toe piece you would add the focal bead and then branch it out for the two sides and that's it and so I'll move on and start the statement beads now so if you had a friend who was tuning in because they wanted to know how to make statement uh, barefoot sandals now is gonna be their time to shine all right so statement bead sandal this is a my favorite kind of sandal to make because it the possibilities are endless so I actually started out making statement necklaces and bracelets um, and then I had all these pieces left over and I was like, I wonder if I can do sandals. Plus there's like this viral picture of a woman wearing state statement sandals that like went all the way up to her knee and people kept asking me to make those. And I'm like, I don't know how to make that. Plus I don't know how to, I don't even know where to buy the materials. So I actually started out making them because I wanted to use up my old jewelry pieces and then also I just wanted like a different kind of sandal something that would stand out and so for the statement sandals what you'll need is the seed beads again you can make them like um like this one you can make them like this one and for something like this, you would need the toe piece. I usually cut three, I cut four inches of um, wire. And again, not wire, of elastic string. And I only use 0.5 millimeter. That's the largest because that's the largest that I can fit two pieces of string through the crimp beads. And then I put the... Um, crimp bead on and then I add this on the crimp bead and so what I would do to make and I usually make the toe piece first it's the simplest part and it's the fastest part and so to make the um, toe bead I will usually take seed beads that are like this like I showed y'all before and then I'll just string them on here and then at the end, I will, hold on, I thought I was going to string today. I don't know what it is, but I don't feel like, like messing with these little bitty beads right now. So what I'll do is then, after I'm done stringing, I'll take the, this thing, the crimp beads, and then I'll put it on the string. So I can at least show y'all that. Let me stop being lazy. 
Um, so I'll take one of the crimp beads. And this is the part that I think helps them to last longer because I do like a double thing. And again, I do this extra stuff because I sell mine. Um, if you're just going to use them for personal use, then uh, you might not want to do both parts, but it just makes the sandal more secure. So then once I have all the strings, let's play pretend, let's put on our imagination hat. Um, after I have all the beads on here, I will add the crimp bead on both strings. So it's over both um, pieces of the string. And then I'll slide it down. No matter what size I make it, I always do three to, if it's a large shoe like I did a size 11 last year, I did a three and a half inch toe piece. And I'm calling it a toe piece because again, I don't know what it's called. I'm just going to call it a toe piece. Um, and so then it makes this little loop. And so you finish the crimp bead by using your cord crimpers. And then I will crimp the ends. And so then I'll end up with this piece. And I don't, I don't cut it yet. I will cut it after, I'll cut the extra after I add the cord crimp, which is this bead, if it'll come out of the bag. And I'll add the cord crimp. And I just remembered, y'all, today is Mary's birthday. So the founder of our group, y'all need to tell her happy birthday. Tell, like, give her a shout out or something. And I know she's not going to like this, but I don't care because I love her. And I feel like if she got 70,000 people in this group, if we got 70,000 people in this group, everybody should know that it's her birthday. And y'all should give her a shout out and tell her how much she means to y'all. So, happy birthday, Mary. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. Aisha says, can you show us how this is done? All right. So, which part did you want to see how it's done? The stringing part or the crimp bead part? I just want to make sure that when I'm demonstrating, I'm actually showing what you want to see versus just going through the wrong motions. So this is what it looks like after you put the um, the cord, the crimp bead on the cord. So again, you would have string, you would have strung your seed beads on the cord, which they're pretty straightforward. Like they have a hole in them, so not much. <laughs> There's not many places you can put the cord. Um, so, yeah. So then you would string the beads along here. Again, you would cut it at least four inches just to make room because when it's time for you to put the crimp bead on, it just makes it easier if you have a little bit extra string versus stringing it all the way to the top. So I'll cut the string four inches and then I'll string three of those inches and then I'll add the crimp bead. And so you'll have beads strung here, you have your crimp bead here, and then you'll have your extra string at the top. Yeah, so Shatisha, the toe part, I measure it and I cut four inches, but I string three of those inches. And the reason I do that is because I want to leave a little bit of flailing hair at the top. Because that's going to make it easier when it's time to add this crimp bead. It's a really small bead. This is a lot of them, but it's a really small bead. And so it makes it easier for me. And, and I should have added this disclaimer at the beginning. This is how I make mine. So you guys, you ladies, you can make them, you know, however you want to. I know I'm not the only one that makes um, sandals. And so... If you see something in my technique that doesn't make sense to you, or if it's too much work, or if it's too extra, by all means, find your own way to do it. If you feel like it's better, feel free to share with how you want to do yours. But this is how I have made mine, and um, I haven't had any issues, I haven't had any complaints, and they've lasted for years. I actually just got a tag yesterday because people are starting to wear the ones that they bought last year so they're starting to wear them now um and they're all still good to go so um again so right now we're at the part where we've strung the beads and i didn't want to string the beads because i felt like it would take a super long time and yeah 
So you've strung the beads and now you have the crimp bead on there. So then after you have the crimp bead, the next step is to add the cord crimp. And this is how you will connect the um, toe part to the main part of the sandal. So there's like three parts of the statement sandal. So you have, there's the anatomy of the of the barefoot sandal. So with the anatomy of a barefoot sandal, you have three parts. So you have the toe part, which is here, and you can see like how it's connected. Then you have the actual sandal, which is this, and then you have the finishing piece, which is in the back. And that's usually a lobster clasp or whatever the other one is. I don't know what the other one is called because I hate it. It's so annoying and it always breaks and they're unreliable. So I didn't even learn the name because that's how petty I am. Um, so then the third part is your finishing piece. So again, the anatomy of a barefoot sandal, you have your toe part, the actual sandal, and your finishing piece. So right now, we've done the string of the toe part and then we're going to add this piece. Crap, I hate that it's like so um, hard to make it focus. But So we're going to add the piece that attaches the toe part to this and so why do I keep losing it I don't know I feel like I like I misplaced it I gotta get my life together I put it down maybe it fell did it fall I don't know all right well and I can't see it oh by the way when you're working with the seed beads I recommend using like a plate or something. Oh, I found it. A plate or something to help catch all the beads because like vacuuming and sweeping up seed beads is not my favorite thing to do. So again, where we are now is I put the cord crimp on the toe part and I'm going to add or the, the crimp bead on the toe part. So now we add the cord crimp, which is this thing. And what you want to do, the cord crimp has a really, really tiny tooth on the back of it. And you want that tooth to go underneath the crimp bead. And I really wish I could like show y'all how this is. Um... So there's, and when you, if you have the materials, it'll be much easier to see. But um, there's like a little tooth that's on the back of the cord crimp. You want that tooth to get up under the um, crimp bead. And so what you want to do is in case, in case with an E, not like just in case, but in case like cover, the um, crimp bead with the cord crimp so and they're about um if you get the right sizes they're about the same so it'll really just nestle the cord crimp should sit nestled in between the um on top of the crimp bead and so all you want to do is it's like an envelope in the sense that you just want to close it so you would use your cord crimp to close one side and of course, it doesn't want to work for me now because I'm trying to show my friends. So you would just close one side. And this is hard. But you just close both sides. <laughs> I knew if I tried to do like a whole demonstration instead of just telling y'all and like showing a little bit, my, none of my stuff would like work right. So yeah, so all you do is you want to just close the cord crimp over... The crimp bead so that the um little loop part looks like like at the top and so because the way that you want it to connect is you want to connect the bottom of the toe part to the bottom of your seed bead or your sandal and so then once you have the cord crimp you will take a jump ring I recommend the smaller one, which is why I said like have the variety. So I recommend having a smaller one. And then, you know, it takes a little practice. Uh, 
because you're going to have to open it up just a little bit, just like a little, little bit. And you want to make sure that it's closed as tight as possible because people are going to be walking with these. And one of my pet peeves is like when I have to treat stuff like with tender loving care and it's like I'm trying to walk. I'm not trying to like make sure that my sandal doesn't break. So you want to make sure that you close it really, really tight. And what works for me is I will close it like at an angle, like a little bit off center. I don't know if y'all can see that. Dang it, I really wish you could. But I like try to close it a little bit off center. I think you can see it now. I close it a little bit off center and then I'll, I'll push them back together and that's how I can get them like closed super, super tight. So there's like no gap whatsoever. So that's how I get mine closed. So I'll close it and make it go a little bit past, make the two ends go a little bit past each other. And then so that when I push them together with my um, crimper, then they come together and there's no gaps. And then I just kind of adjust it so that they're not totally, totally off, so it's flat. And then it ends up completely closed. And then what you'll do is if you have your statement pieces already, um, what you would do is just take them, like for instance, this piece. For the second portion, that's the this is the part that's going to lay on their foot. And so what you want, the way that you measure this part is you'll take the longest end and this is the end that should measure for their foot. This end matters, but like not really. I mean, obviously it matters because you want to have a full sandal, but it doesn't matter as much as find figuring out what long end you want to have. So for example, this is my long end. And I made this one a little bit bigger um, because I'm going to be wearing anklets too. And so I'm going to let it fall um, a little bit farther down my foot. So, like I said, when you're measuring the sandal for the seed bead, you would still measure for um, their foot size. And so you would just take the string and you would measure, not the string, you would take the statement pieces and you're going to make sure that your longest piece measures for their foot length. So for instance, for mine, I have a seven and a half. And so I would want to make sure that my longest piece measures at least nine and a half inches. So technically, it should stop with this bead. But again, I added another bead because I want it to fall lower. And what I do is I make mine offset. And what that means is I put the um, lobster class in the closure on the side instead of on the back. Because when people are walking, I don't know about y'all, but when I'm walking that like, that little gristle <laughs> in the back of your foot, I don't want the lobster class to rub up against it. So that was just out of consideration for my clients. So what you're gonna do is you'll make the longest piece first. And so to start the longest piece, you the longest piece is actually two pieces. So the first piece is the part that's gonna lay on their toe. Not on their toe, on their foot. And so out of that um, measurement, I usually make that three inches. So no matter what pieces you choose, I always make it three inches. And I don't really have an explanation for it, but I don't know, everybody, I don't know. <laughs> I usually just make it three to three and a half inches no matter what the size is. And then I'll make the rest of the, the um, the sandal to whatever inches their feet, their foot 
should be. And so the part that lays on their foot is usually three to three and a half inches. And so what I'll do is I'll measure that out in whatever pieces I'm using. And then that's what I'll make for that portion. So for this, um, the three inches is only three pieces. So then what you would do is you would just separate those three pieces and then you would take the um, the toe piece along with a jump ring You would take the jump ring and add it to the end. Of the piece that's going to lay on your foot. And again, we're making the longest piece first. So then you have this piece that's going to lay on your foot. And then you have your toe piece, which obviously it didn't want to cooperate with me. So I'm just going to make it so that it at least so that we have a little reference and i thought i made a shorter one all right so we'll use this one all right so what you're gonna do is this is your toe piece and it has the ring here and the seed beads here you're gonna take that piece along with a jump ring and there you go so then you have your toe piece and there's usually two sides to the um, cord crimp, which is this golden piece here. I like to add, to make sure that the pieces that you had to fold over, that I make it so that those are on the back of the sandal. Just, I don't know, just a little aesthetic point. Um, so now we have the toe piece and the foot piece. And the next thing is, I like to use a larger jump ring for this part of it, just because it helps the pieces lay flat. Because what you're gonna notice, this is like what you're gonna construct is like a fork in the road. So you see, with the larger jump ring, it lays flat. Versus like if you had a smaller one, they might have some crowding and they might wanna go on top of each other. So with this, you have like a shape of a Y. And what you want to do is you want to take this piece that lays on your foot, add a jump ring here, and then the sec the way that you measure out the second part is you just do some subtraction. So if the foot that you're making it for is a size seven and a half like mine, you would take 9.5 or 9.7 inches, subtract three, inches and then measure out the rest with your beads so you take this and I can't see what time it is um and then you measure out the remainder of it and that's why I said you want to have two pieces two strings well this is seven inches so I usually use two of these per sandal and obviously four per pack so in order to get the second part of the long piece, you want to measure out whatever's left. And so for me, that is six inches. So you want to open it up and then you want to, I'm going to take this down because that's confusing me. You want to add the um, larger jump ring to the middle of it. So that you can make your letter Y. So 
So you want to open up your jump ring and then you want to make it so that you add the part that lays on your foot first. Hold on, this jump ring is a little bit open. All right, so you want to add the part that, you know, this is your foot part. And then the next part that you want to add is the remainder, which will make up the longer side of your sandal. And then what I have found is that when you need to bring it around, you will need just one more inch more than what you had to make the um, rest of it. So I usually make the other side, the shorter end, about four inches. And this is another reason why I include the extender chain for ones that I'm selling because nobody's foot is the same and my feet are not the exact same size. And so for people that, you know, one of their feet is longer than the other, one of their feet is longer than the other one, um, they will have sandals that fit and that they're still comfortable. So now we have made this part, we've made the toe part, we've made the part that lays on the foot, and then now we're attaching the two last pieces. So we've included the longer end, which for a size seven and a half is like six and a half inches. And then now we're going to include the shorter end as well, which this is the part that'll wrap it around and it has the finishing piece on it. So you would, hold on. I dropped it. <laughs> um, hold on one sec. So then what I would do is I would measure out the last part of this. And I would add that to the jump ring as well. Which is what I'm going to do now. This song from Why Do Fools Fall In Love has been stuck in my head. I love Lorenz Tate. And I love that movie. I watched it last week. So I keep seeing like songs from the platters in my head. Um, I usually play music when I craft. I listen to the most... The, the most nasty... Um, trap music that I can find when I'm crafting. Um, so this is actually kind of difficult for me to do this in silence. And like only hear my own voice. So this is being stubborn, but what I'm doing now is just measuring out the second piece, which is going to wrap around the other side of the ankle. And I'm going to add all of this to the same jump ring. And just as a note, you want to make sure that you're making it so that it's going to lay flat. And so when you're putting it on the jump rings and everything, it's good to do it on a flat surface. So that you can know that it's going to lay flat. Because you want it to lay flat on their foot. And the pieces that you choose, I mean the, the possibilities are pretty much endless. But you want to make sure that um, it's something that's going to be comfortable to wear. And comfortable to walk in. So what I did before I started selling them was I just bought stuff. And then I made the sandals myself. And then since I'm my own worst critic, I wore them myself. And that's how I've figured out what would be comfortable and what, you know, what would not, what would be uncomfortable. And so you want to make sure that your beads that you choose for this project have a flat back. Um, they can have a little bit of a curve for the pieces that are going to go on the ankle. Like if you want to do like a mixed media design. But for the pieces that are going to lay on your foot, you really want to make sure, because we have that bone there in the middle, you really want to make sure that you have something that's flat. So, like, these are going to be my next set, and these are, I think these are Mother of Pearl. And again, I got these from Hancock Fabrics before they went out of business, too. And so, they have, like, a flat back, and they have the 
um, two holes in the middle. Like I said, you want beads that have two holes in the middle. Um, so I can use something like this. Um, you could also use something like, uh, this was a necklace that I had and I broke it down and I made it into some sandals. So with this, they're not completely flat, but they're um, polished and rounded off. And so they still have like some jewels and different colors, but then, you know, they're still comfortable. So I've worn these and I have like enough to make another set. Um, they're really pretty on the feet, especially for um, brown skin people like me. <laughs> and so you can still use things like this. And if you have beads and you, and you know, they're not strong like this, you can always get um, these little wires and make your own beads. And you just put it through the bead. Like if you have like a bead like this and it's not on a wire, but you want to make something like what I just showed, you would just take the wire, put it through, curve it on one end, curve it on the other end, add some jump rings and bam, you have your thing. Um, another option just to make sure that the back is flat and you have this i've decided i don't like this color here so i'm gonna change this and make it gunmetal but again this is another option and so you have like the same toe technique with the um wire just for aesthetic purposes i like to match it up or at least try to match it up as close as possible so since this is gunmetal i use silver um finishings and findings and I use the gunmetal it's gunmetal on the sides so I use the gunmetal chain and a similar technique I just use a three inch toe piece a three inch middle and then instead of measuring out this because it came like in a set like this um, I just measured out a chain and so this is another option so if you want to do something like this you could do it but I finished this piece so then this is what it looks like see that was really easy right so you have your toe piece you have this this is the longer end which is like what their shoe what their foot measures um, from here to here is what their the length of their foot and then this piece is just the part that comes around to finish it off. And so like I said, with the anatomy of a barefoot sandal, we have three pieces. We have the toe piece, we have the actual sandal, and then we have the finishing piece. And my preference is to add medium sized jump rings to um, one medium sized jump ring to the side that you're going to use to close it out. And then um, I like to use a small jump ring on the side that has the lobster clasp just because it makes it makes me feel like it's more secure if it's smaller versus the larger ones you have a little bit more movement so the last part would be to choose your jump ring and again you don't have to follow exactly what I do you could try small ones large ones medium ones whatever you think would work best for you and um, take those add them to the end of the piece and I'll just use a large one just to show you and also if you're concerned about them turning you could get um, the gold plated ones or I think it's Michaels that has gold plated jewelry I don't, I'm not sure if Hobby Lobby has it but if you really want to you could use gold plated jewelry like they have the jump rings, they have extender chains, like you could really like rack up on some really nice stuff. But just in my experience, you could use, you could buy this stuff and there's like a spray or you could just use some clear nail polish and go over it and it doesn't turn um, if you're really concerned about it. But last year I didn't use anything and I don't think any of mine turned. Um, so... Yeah, so then you want to add the jump ring. This is the end that's going to close it. And then you want to add a smaller jump ring to the other end. Along with 
uh, the lobster clasps. Alright, so you add the jump ring to this end. My hands are sweating, so it's like slipping out of my hands. Not trying to cooperate at all. Okay. But anyway, you add the small jump ring to this side, add your lobster clasp, and then that's your statement sandal. And that's it. So you today we made um, seed bead style sandals and we made statement sandals. And just for some last minute tips, um, I would recommend for